Um, yeah, so my talk will be about uh, orthogonal factorization systems uh, inside homotopy dive theory. So basically, uh, what the thing that I will talk about is if you have a function f from a to b, um, if there is a notion of an image factorization uh, image of f in an appropriate way, if you get such a thing for every natural number n, uh, such a factorization system. Uh, so uh, the theorem that I will show is that you have a factorization, that there is a unique factorization system, uh, unique factorization through the image. In other words, the space of all factorizations uh, in the appropriate sense is contractible. So let me just uh, write on this board some preliminaries so that, uh, that we can keep them here and you can uh, go back to this board whenever that's necessary. Uh, I write down some notation here. Uh, notation and uh, basic uh, concepts or equivalence uh, properties. Uh, I will denote uh, paths, unfortunately, by this notation. Um, if A is a type. Uh, then, um, then this level and uh, zero a means is counter of a and is <coughs> level n plus one of a means for every uh, x y in a is level n x y. So these are the homotopy levels that I assume for this talk that you all know it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, there is a type uh, h level uh, n and this is defined to be the sum of x in type uh, is level n x. So that's like the, the space of all types which have this homotopy level. This will be useful. Um, if A is an arbitrary type, um, then there is a higher, uh, higher inductive type um, uh, and I denote it by this and this, I think it's a bit unfortunate, but I didn't want to make the change for this presentation because it's all over our article and I think this way. And it's, uh, so it's like the brackets uh, from Audi and Bauer's article. It's called the truncation. Uh, the truncation of A or of A, or the n truncation, um, which uh, tau n from A to A n. So this is why I didn't make the change, because I have to tell n as a map here. <laughs> so it would get very <coughs> confusing for me uh, among uh, uh, the basic constructors. It's not the only one, of course, obviously. Uh, uh, but this is one of them, and it has the universal property. And uh, and uh, the universal property that oh yeah, um, I should say about the homotopy levels. Um, you can also say that the dependent type has a homotopy level n. And it means just that all the fibers have homotopy level n. But likewise, you can say that the function has homotopy level n by saying that all the homotopy fibers of that function have homotopy level n. Is that clear or should I write it down? That's clear. Okay. Um, hmm? Ah, okay. Um, um, 
I, I will not write that truncation. I will uh, switch with the property that for every dependent type, yeah, I just write t from a and to uh, type. Uh, or yeah. With uh, p of x of level n for each x, um, there is an equivalence uh, ah, no, I'm writing this w n Oops. Given uh, by lambda s s composed with tau n. So this is the universal property of n truncation that I will be using all the time. So you can, uh, if you have a property which is only of homotopy level n, then um, yeah. So the non-dependent version of this. Uh, if V is of level N, then uh, A N to B is equivalent to A to B. So here you can uh, see that this property really settles the N truncation as the left to joint of the inclusion of homotopy level N. That's, that's the idea. Uh, Okay, then, uh, then what else? There are some more equivalences that I will be using all the time. So I, I will just denote them here. If f from a to b and g from b to c and c is in c, then H fiber of G F at C is equivalent to the sum of H fiber uh, G and C, H fiber uh, F, but at Freud one of W. So um, this is explains how you compute the homotopy fiber of a composition. And um, if F is Bx, Qx is a transformation like that, um, define uh, like sigma AF from x to uh, a q x by uh, lambda x u uh, x f u. So you, <coughs> if you have a transformation like that, it also acts on the total spaces. And um, then the homotopy fiber of sigma a f at the pair x and v is equivalent to the homotopy fiber of f x at v. And um, yeah, here I want to spend a word on this one. This is one of my favorite equivalences in homotopy type theory um, because uh, it explains, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very useful because each of these homotopy fibers is of level zero or contractible, if and only if this homotopy fibers are contractible, which explains that this function here is an equivalence, if and only if each of these functions is an equivalence. And this is a very powerful tool that, uh, that is used by Foyevolsky to prove from weak 
function extensionality, strong function extensionality. Um, it's used by um, Mike Schumann to show that uh, that the, the loop space of the circle is the integers. Uh, I will use it a couple of times in this talk, and I think currently it's being used to show uh, by Dan Licata and, and Rimeri, um, things like this. So, so it, it follows from this equivalence, if you like. Um, moreover, what? Sorry. So this this function you you can just let it act on the second component. So you, so you have like a, tr a um, like a yeah a fiber transformation, and it acts on the total spaces, and on the total spaces it gives an equivalence if and only if it's a fiber equivalence. Um, and but moreover, um, it's a fiber of level n. So each of these things is of level n, if and only if this one is of level n. And we will also see later on that each of these f of x is n connected, if and only if the big one here is n connected. And that will be useful. So, um, yeah, the Ahmad P fiber is like uh, the notion in Ahmad P type theory of the inverse image. And um, I have a little corner here. Uh, H fiber F of B is A and A. F A is equal to B. Yeah, I will be using these all the time, so it's good that I have written them down. Uh, this should be readable, right? Um, Ah, and one more property that I will use all the time. Um, um, oh, yeah, so the idea was that I wanted to keep these, but uh, um, so that I don't have to erase them ever again. Um, so I want to just write down one more equivalence, then I'm done with the prerequisites. So <laughs> it is this property that um if you have a truncation of a sigma of a dependent type this is equivalent to um, uh, when you truncate it also inside so you can uh, you can truncate this this fibers here and that's also something very basic that you can show with this universal property. So, um, yeah, let's get going. Um, yeah, let's first give give an example of how to use this <coughs> this nice equivalence out there. And um, I want to I want to show it to you by giving an equivalence for. Uh, x, y, and a, you can look at this truncation. Um, you have then the tau n plus 1 of x sitting in the n plus 1 truncation of a, right? Uh, and you can compare it to tau n plus 1 of y. Um, and what should this be in the truncation? Uh, well, it's a truncation, so this, this is something of some type of level n because it's a path space in 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 the type of level n plus one, and you can just compute it, uh, and it's this. This I'm going to show. So uh, <coughs> proof. Um, so we can um, we will define. P depending on A n plus 1 A n plus 1 to type so it's it's like a binary relation over over the n plus 1 truncation over A 
and morally it should be the path relation uh, of, of a, the n plus one truncation of a, right? Because, uh, yeah, so we should, yeah, and actually we are not going to define just a dependent type, but something <laughs> of h level n. Ah, and here is another thing that I didn't say in the prerequisites. This thing here is itself like also a type and it has homotopy level n plus one. So I can, hmm? Of course, yeah, of course, of course it, it requires proof, but, uh, but I didn't want to go in that. That's basically univalence. Uh, so, and, and then it follows directly when you use univalence. So because this thing has level n plus one, you can use, use this universal property that I wrote down over there. So I can define uh, P by defining P of tau n plus one X of tau n plus one Y just to be this type. Right, this is obviously of level n. Uh, so I can, I can define P like that. Okay, and now, now we have we have p, uh, so where am I? This is page three, not yet in page three. Page four. Mm. I'm lost. Sorry. Well, let's do it anyway. Um, so, uh, can we then show for every w and w prime in a n plus one? that p w w prime uh, implies w is equal to w prime. Um, so why would we want to do this? It's because, uh, because we have here, um, we, we get ourselves in this situation. Um, uh, so we want to actually look then if, if we have such a fiberized transformation, um, we, uh, so we want it to show that actually here we get an equivalence. So then we, w then we let it act on the total spaces. Here, this has a very easy total space uh, because it's going to be contractible when you just sum it over one of the two. So then you just have to so show the same for, for P, for the total space. So let's first con construct this. Um, well, this is functions mapping into some path space. The path space is in a type of level n plus one, so it's so is itself of level n plus one. So we can use uh, use the universal property x y in a p tau n plus one x. Yeah. So uh, let's just not write it down. Just immediately unfold the definition. And here is written tau n plus one x <coughs> tau n plus one y. So I changed this, but then I have to use instead of w here the, the n truncation. Um, but this type is again of level n. So I can use the universal property here. And now it's by induction, or by app of tau n plus one, if you want. Okay, so we, so we have a term of this. Uh, this is equivalent, so we get our our function here. Um, so so we since we obtain this function to show that it it gives an equivalence, we have to show that for every w in a n plus one, uh, we, we obtain an equivalent from w prime a n plus one, p uh, w w prime uh, 
is equivalent to uh, to this w prime a n plus one uh, w leads to w prime. This one is contractible, like I announced, so I am going to erase this stuff and just write down is counter here. This is the thing that I have to show. Um, uh, yeah, okay. sorry. Sorry that I did this. Yeah. So, um, Okay. Sorry. Um, just so I have to write W. So we uh, get from here to there by showing for every W. It's a thing. If, if if I show this, then I get this. Um, okay. So, but this uh, is always a proposition because that's the nature of is counter, and this is of level n plus one, which means that it's at least a proposition. So I can use the universal property. Now I have to write tau n plus one of this was an a w prime. Okay, and um, so we know a term here, and it's the term tau n plus one a identity on tau n plus one a. This pair is a term of of that sigma type because. Um, Oh, sorry, I confused this. This is the tau n of it a. I should write it because it's the uh, entry. Yeah, it's this space here. So it's the uh, entry of of something. Well, it's now. Um, So here you have like A and A truncated. So it's 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 the image of the of the identity. Yeah. So so we can show that this is contractible by showing that. Um, so assume A uh, for every. Um, other thing, so every W in A n plus one and every uh, U in P tau n plus one A. Should I write a W here? Um, the pair W U is identical to tau n plus one a tau n it's a. if I so I show that every other element of this sum is identical to this one that's what I've written down um, okay uh, but now again this here is of level uh, n plus one so I use and use this property again uh, X. Ah, 
Um, this here I can unfold immediately. So this is uh, a x n, and here is tau n plus 1 x u tau n plus 1 a tau n is a. Um, and this here is of level n. So I use again the universal property. Um, yeah, let me just write it a bit quicker here. So you get here um, p from there, you get here then tau n of p. Um, but this looks awfully lot like you can imply induction and that's what you do. So for every x and a, for every arbitrary path, um, uh, you have to find something between some things of this form. So if this is going to be the identity on A, and if here is A, then it's written exactly the same as there. So that's, with induction, you can wrap, this, wrap up this argument. Path induction, yeah. <coughs> no. No, yeah. Um, where is it hidden? It should be hidden somewhere, but 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 you have we used enough properties. So yeah, the universal property, for example, the definition of. So, so that was one nice argument with univalence and with this uh, equivalence that I showed, and um, yeah. I can now, yeah, I, I will not go to prove this because I want to prove other things. Um, but if you have a diagram A, F, X, B, G, then you can also consider the truncated diagram A, F, With, uh, with an arbitrary n there everywhere. Uh, so um, and you can, you can pull back. So let's say that we have here um, a cross x b. And we have here a uh, cross <coughs> x Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, how much you pull back? I mean, yeah, so whenever I say pull back or push out, or I mean, always oh, how much you pull back or push out. Um, so, when you truncate this, it's <laughs> go not going to be this. Um, but it's going to be very similar. So the, the pullback, uh, there's a nice formula for it. It is the sum of A and A, B and B, such that F of A is equal to G of B. Um, and now this pullback, uh, A times x uh, b is not going to be the truncation the end truncation of the oh i should write the n let's do it uh, n, 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 n. Um, now when you consider the n plus one pullback plus one then you can truncate Uh, this here, F A G B n plus one, but this is not quite correct. You have to truncate here as well, but to level n. Um, and this is a statement. If you prove it, you use this property. 
but uh, I will not have enough time because I want to show image factorization. Um, but yeah, just to indicate the result where you could use such a thing. So, um, yeah, then I want to go to uh, to this image factorization and in category theory uh, you have this epimono factorization and that's the result what I'm after here in type theory. So we should first define uh, our notion of epi and definition uh, function f from a to b is set to be n connected um, if for every b and b is compare H fiber F B N. Um, so the um, and likewise you can say that a type is n connected by so um, A is n connected if and only if A to unit is and this is if and only if is counter uh, a n um, and you can also say that the dependent type is n connected by saying that each of its fibers is n connected um, yeah so here you see a function is n connected if and only if in this sense all the homotopy fibers are n connected and um, um, yeah, so, so the image factorization result that I'm after is that for every function here, you have uh, in a unique way an n connected, you can factor it as an n connected, followi followed by a function whose homotopy fibers are of level n. And the space of all such factorizations is contractible, which I want to show. Um, okay, now I really want to get some feedback from. So let's just get some some easy things. Um, if f from a to b is n connected, uh, g is a function from b to c, then um, g. If and only if uh, G F is. Um, this is very similar to kind of properties that you have for epimorphisms. And the proof is also easy. Um, you have the n truncation of the homotopy fiber of uh, G F at C. This is something that we should look at. Well, we know how to compute this. This is the n truncation of the sum of the, I want the longer chalk, sum of W in H fiber uh, G at C. And uh, here we have H fiber F at Roy 1. W. This is n truncated. Um, now, with one of these basic properties, I can move a truncation inside. Uh, so w in H fiber G C H fiber F word 1 W. And by assumption, this here is contractible. So this is H fiber G 
you C. Um, and so you see that this one is contractible as long as that one is contractible. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let me draw um, the typical example of uh, one connected space is a circle. Um, um, yeah, one connected means in a way just path connected. Uh, the old fashioned path connected notion. Hmm? Ah, um, Sorry, uh, one, one connected means that the proposition truncation is contractible. Um, ah, so yeah, zero truncated. Yeah, if you truncate it to a set, then it's, uh, so it's two connected. Zero connected, also in this sense. Yeah, I'm inten I intend to. So this is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Too connected. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, um, but I will be very confused if I talk now. So, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I, I will try to do that. So, hmm? so when you truncate this to H set, then it becomes uh, contractible and um, that that's an example of something w which is then uh, topologically zero connected or type theoretically uh, two edge level connected. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Okay. So. Um. And then you keep so nothing. Yeah. And the exactly. So in in another put in another way means that a type is n connected if all the, homo the interesting structure, homotopy structure happens above the level n. That's uh, and that's the case in the circle. Um, so basic property of n connectedness is this uh, proposition um, f from a to b is n connected um, if and only if for every uh, p from uh, over b, I guess, type of level n, uh, there is an equivalence, and it's the following. Uh, B in B, 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 A in A, B of F A, um, given by lambda S, S upper F. So if we prove this, 
then we know already one basic example of add connected function. And that's on the other board on the far end. It's the uh, map uh, tau n. Yeah. So, so that would be very good because then we are immediately done. Uh, okay. Ten minutes. Proof. Okay. Um, yeah, suppose F is N connected. I'll just continue here. Then like this. Yeah. Then we can look at this space, or we should look at this space. Uh, this is a P of B. Um, and this one is of no, F is M connected. So this is equivalent to for every B and B. Uh, H fiber F B N implies P B. Just because this one here is contractible. And uh, now you use the universal property uh, A and A P F A B. Uh, what's P B? And uh, yeah, so what always happens in this case is you cancel this here. Yeah, and then this becomes uh, PF of A. Yeah, and you can then look the underlying function of this equivalence is exactly that. So that's, <coughs> that's one part of the proof. Um, uh, for the other one, uh, suppose we suppose that f has this property that this one is an equivalence. So this explicitly, this function here is an equivalence for every dependent type b of level n. Then uh, look at uh, the dependent type h fiber f b n, which is obviously of level n. Um, no, I should remember what we should do with it. We have this equivalence. Um, so we should use it better. We have for every b in b h fiber uh, f b n is equivalent to for every a and A, uh, H fiber F at F of A, uh, and um, here we very easily find the term. And the term that we find here is taking lambda to the tau n, because this is an n truncation of the pair A identity of F A. Um, so this mean because we have this equivalence, we get this term here. So we get C of that product um, with the property that C at F of A becomes tau N A is F A. So C is an element of this product. No, definitionally equal. Uh, a path would be just as good, but um, yeah, but the equivalence is given by this function. But uh, yeah, I ah, uh, oh, but the function is in that direction. Uh, yeah, okay. So you're right. Uh, we 
English with Genesis in our paper. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so, so we got this. And now we want to show that the homotopy fiber of F at B, or the entrication of it is contractible because we want to show that F is unconnected. That's our goal. So we already have uh, like a candidate of the center of contraction. This is C applied to B. And we want to show that it's the only one. So to show that it's contractible, we have to show that for every B in B, for every term in this H fiber, F at B, and there is a path from W to C of B. Now, um, this is a path space in something of level N, I believe. So we can use the, this property here. Uh, and it's going to be exactly the same trick. A and A, B from F, A, B. Uh, um, what do I get here? Tau N of the pair A, B. And should go to C of B. Well, uh, going to cancel these two again. Uh, so this is equivalent to for every a and a tau and a identity on f a c of f a, and this holds by our choice of c. Um, um, yeah, so this this is a product over a sum over a total space, and the total space. Uh, so when you sum this over this, and what is in between there does not depend on it, so you can just move it out. Uh, this is contractible space, and the center of contraction is exactly uh, the pair f of a here, and the path it f of a there. That's the center of contraction. And that's what I'm doing all the time. Yeah. It is, it is like an induction, I think. <coughs> that was the proof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, so I wanted to give also a ref reformulation <coughs> of this uh, theorem because you can replace dependent type P by the uh, vibrant replacement of a function. Uh, so if, if you have a function G with the same codomain B uh, and the homotopy fibers are of level N, then you can write instead of the P the homotopy fibers there. So that's what I... I will do that. Um, and this will become, this will lo then look more closely what happens in, uh, in category theory, which is actually how we found this property. It's some assertion about maps in some comma category. Um, so this is reef uh, 
formulation. Um, in sets of uh, C, take uh, G from X to B with uh, H fibers of level N, then uh, then F. So. Um, I should really say f is n connected if and only if for every function g with h fiber of level n, but I already mix it up, so n connected if and only if for every, what did I write, b? h fiber um, g b is equivalent to uh, a and A H fiber G at F of A. And um, here this homotopy fiber uh, is like a, like a sum, so you can apply the axiom of choice to it, or the type theoretical choice. And then the statement becomes, um, I don't want to make mistakes, so. Um, so, or uh, the space of function h from b to x such that g h is homotopic to identity map on b uh, is equivalent to the space of functions k from a to x I will soon draw a picture uh, such that G of K is homotopic to F. Um, so this means that you have this function F, you have this function G sitting around there, and um, you can find uh, sections of G by finding uh, s uh, sections like that. Uh, that's basically all, all that it is. Um, so this is, so you find a morphism in the comma category from G to the identity map, if you, if and only if you can find a morphism in the comma category from G to F. So and this is, yeah, this is more to say how we found this easier statement, which proves very easily with dependent types. Okay. Um, then I move to images because I just have half an hour. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so yeah, I I didn't use this property in my proof. <laughs> so, uh, but but prob probably there is then a shorter proof once you know this. Um, a proof of the article of the factorization system I mean given yeah but but I didn't look at it that way uh, yeah so let's define the image uh, if f from a to b then image n of f is defined to be the sum b and B of the H fiber F B N. So you always have, uh, so you have Freud one from image N F to B, and it's of homotopy level N because these things here are of homotopy level N. 
is by fibrin replacement again. Uh, so this we don't have to, ah. Um, then we want to, sh we also have this function uh, and I think I usually denote it like f tilde or something, but I don't know if this is the right notation from a to image of n f and it's given by lambda a dot and then it should be a pair here is f of a and here it is the truncated n of the homotopy fiber at f of a so it's going to be again the pair f a that we have seen before bracket there so you have a function like that from a to the image um, and um, this function is n connected also and it's basically again by this property here so I'm going to uh, so recall that that um, yeah you have this equivalence so this homotopy fiber is n connected if and only if this homotopy fiber is n connected so this means that um, it's fiber wise n connected if and only if it's on the total space n connected right so so we can use that for the image um, Yeah, I, I was about to explain it, I, but yeah, I didn't know if I was about to draw a picture, so thanks. So what, what's going on? Um, um, you have F from, yeah, you have uh, this is the picture that you want? Then you can go by row one and oh yeah I can write that down uh, so this one does not become row one um, uh, it's fiber. Yeah, so you always have this function. And uh, why did I write an F here? This would be a D. Um, yeah, and now you have fiber-wise here, the truncation maps. These are N-connected. So you get an N-connected map here on the total uh, spaces. Um, and this one here is an equivalent, so it's N-connected. And therefore the function from A to the image is n connected. Um, yeah, that was a good suggestion. Thanks. Uh, okay. So. Uh, Suppose theorem. Uh, suppose we have A and B, and we have x1 and x2, and functions g1, g2, h1, h2. Uh, sup um, that g1 and g2 are n connected uh, h1 and h2 uh, are of level n so the homotopy fibers are of level n um, then um, then what 
then the homotopy fiber fiber of H1 at the point G is equivalent to the homotopy fiber of H2 at the same point B. That's the theorem that I want to show. And after this theorem, I will show a unique factorization. Um, okay, so let's start at the left side, H fiber H1 B. It's equivalent to the sum of W in H fiber uh, H1B and then this truncation H fiber uh, G1 of B just because by assumption this one is contractible. So the first component remains the same I'm, and I'm just summing contractible spaces over it. So that's, that's equivalent. Um, but this thing here, or um, it's still of homotopy level n, so I can write uh, brackets around it. Um, so I'm going to write it down. Um, but then I will use this property to forget about the inner brackets. Oh, yes. Thanks. Uh, Proy 1 W. Yeah, sorry. So the, the first projection of W is a type, uh, is a term of type X1. So there you can take the H fiber again. Thanks. Um, okay. So as I announced, this is going to be the W in H fiber H1 B H fiber G1 Proy 1 W and so get brackets here. Um, but this one here, we use that rule for the composition. So this is the H fiber of uh, H1 followed by G1 at B. Yeah, so um, so this type is of homotopy level N, so I, it's the same as the truncation, but when you have a truncation, when you are summing over, yeah, so. You also must get rid of the brackets in the top, right? Yeah, because of this rule. Yeah. yeah. So now we know, uh, ah, uh, I forgot one big assumption. There's a homotopy H. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. Yeah, I'm supposed that there is one. Yeah. So, so you. So, so the statement is you have, um, you have basically a function from A to B and two possible factorizations of it. Yeah, sorry. Um, then um, the homotopy fibers of this one and this one are the same. This is the homotopy, so <coughs> H goes from H1, G1 to H2, G2. It's a homotopy. Now it looks like an S. <laughs> there was proposed a wiggle. <laughs> so it's like. Ah. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's, uh, that's how I want to use it also. <laughs> um, so um, 
yeah, I run into this problem because I wanted to use this homotopy. Uh, of course, uh, shit. So I can replace this by H fiber, oh, H2, G2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm arrived here and I can do the same trick again uh, with the messages that I will get as the H fiber of uh, H2 at B. Now, um, I want to add something to the statement. Uh, and it's kind of computation. Where am I? Seven, nine. Yeah. So this is an equivalence. Uh, <coughs> let's call it E for equivalence. Um, search that E. Um, yeah, it kind of depends on the homotopy, so let's write this H also here. Um, e at the point H1, G1 of A, so A is the point in A, then you can apply G1 and H1 to there. Um, is going to be yeah, but probably with the pot then, and I should make no mistakes. Where is it going to end up? Ah, um, so this one is really with the B also. So E depends on H and on B, then it gives an equivalence. You can apply it to the point, um, uh, what? G1 of A, identity of H1, G1 of A. And it's going to compute as the pair uh, G2 of A. And then the homotopy at A inverse. So, um, so let's look what these equivalences do to this term to find out if we really end up here. So we started this term, G1, A1. So let's draw G1, A. What did I write? Identity on H1, G1, A. Um, and then it goes by the first equivalence to the same pair, but things added to it. G1 of A. And what's added to it on the next page? Uh, this was 10 already, 11. Um, yeah, what's added to it is the center of contraction there and it's of the form tau n a identity on g1 a. So that's a term, and I should close the brackets already. So the last, last part, part is, is a term at, uh, at the homotopy fiber because the first component is g1 of a. You do here the first component, so you get it at g1 of a. Um, so the obvious term would be A and the identity on G1. Yeah, um, sorry, I need this in the next result. So, uh, And then by the next line, this is just mapped to the tau n of, the of some quadruple. G1 of A, identity H1, G1 of a and it G1 of A and this is mapped to tau n of the pair A um, it H1 G1 of A in the next line so uh, it's in this step 
you just forget about this to get uh, oops. this one to get it. That one, yeah. Um, but now here, to go from here to there, we applied the homotopy. Tau n of a and the homotopy. So that function, that's the equivalence there, is applying the homotopy on the path and on the points you do nothing. So that's how this uh, homotopy inverse sneaks in. And then you unfold the rest and you get that G2. I hope that you can believe this. Um, so now, final statement. Ah, it's here. Suppose uh, f from a to b define uh, the space <coughs> factorizations uh, n f to be some big space x in type g from a to x. So yeah, let's just keep a picture somewhere. So we have um, a, b, f, and now in our type is some type x. Next thing is a function g. That's this g. Then h from x to b. That's this h, um, then a homotopy from h g to f, because it should of course commute, um, and uh, here is an connected g, and um, is level n h. So you have a big space of all such possible factorizations and it is contractible. Um, so uh, of course you are going to need univalence for this because you, so yeah, we found the center of contraction already by taking for the x the n image, then this canonical map towards the n image and the projection from the n image, and we showed all these properties. So we have a term of it. We just have to show that it's a proposition. Um, and we are going to use univalence because on the first component you have a type, so you need a path between types. And you you're going to get it by an equivalence. Proof. This is page 12. Mm. Okay, so, so we're going to show that it's a proposition because that works out nicer and together with this theorem as well. Uh, suppose x1, g1, h1, <coughs> h1, and some stuff is connected and level one uh, and likewise x2 g2 h2 h2 c2 l2 are of the appropriate type um, so let's make a list of what we have to do because it's otherwise it's impossible to keep track of it So one thing to note is that, um, yeah, yeah, let's just write it down. Um, to do uh, one, 
uh, find an equivalence, uh, find p from x1, x2. Two. Now we have um, these two functions, and I have to transport this uh, this one along the equivalence, and I have to show that I obtain this one. Now transporting along an equivalence, it should be just uh, post-composing. <coughs> um, find zeta uh, from p composed with g1 a homotopy to g2. Likewise, three find, what did I write? Eta from um, h2 p <coughs> h1, four find, um, yeah, so now, now we have to, now we have like obtained a path um, in these three two terms and we, trans we transport the homotopy along that path. Um, yeah, if you can, um, yeah, it's basically just write down the only obvious thing which is possible to write down. So H1 followed by H1 composed with zeta inverse followed by zeta composed with G2 is homotopy to H2. And I, yeah, I didn't find it very intuitive. Maybe somebody finds it, but. Yeah, it's coming from the diagram itself, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you show that you have two homotopies in the side plane. And they have to yeah. be in the other direction. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah, that's what it's saying, but. I don't find a fluent translation from this expression to expression with a triangle. So, um, and now um, here, these two are propositions. So um, you can transport along the path, but you always end up <coughs> at the same at the same point. Um, this one is a, tr tr a proposition because it's a product of a is contour of something, and its its level is a proposition because you can show that by induction. Um, so we just have to do these four things. Um, and of course we are going to use that there. I should do it real quickly. So um, we have these equivalences between these homotopy fibers. Now we use that my favorite equivalence again. Um, take the total space of this homotopy fibers and uh, this homotopy fibers, and they are equi again equivalents. But what's the total space of homotopy fibers? It's just the domain of the function that's written here, and likewise here. So, and the domain of that function is x1 and x2. So. Um, in words, this is a very quick way of saying x1 is equivalent by 2x2. Um, um, so we have E H, which H? I'm confusing myself. Why am I doing this? Ah, H1. So define H is H two composed with H one, then we have E H B H fiber um, H one. B um, and um, uh, 
this is equivalent to x1, uh, x1 b is equivalent to and this is equivalent to x, x2. Uh, ah, yeah. Sorry. Um, so we got this equivalence, and it's nice to know what it does on points because we are going to use that. Um, so so one is now okay. So <coughs> let's write it in our list accomplished so um, so we get e applied to a point uh, in x1 which is of the form g1 of a look I'm going to construct number two um, but uh, that theorem gives us some information about it because this is really um, this is really E at H applied to uh, what? It's not exactly. Um, it is H1 G1 of A. And here it should be E at H applied to H1. Is that correct what I'm writing now? Sorry, I'm confusing myself again. Um, yeah, so this maps to there. Um, and so now we are already there, and then it's projection, but it should be G2 here. I'm hopelessly confusing myself. And I practice this in the morning. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, so the message should be E of H, which I'm not writing, but E at the point X and X1 should be defined by PROI1 of this E. Um, this E was computed at H, for some reason I have an inverse H1 X. Ah, that's why I put the H1 there, um, applied to X identity H1 X. Um, yeah. And yeah, when I now apply it to something of the form G1 of A, then I get here something of the form H1 G1 of A applied to, uh, and here the pair becomes G1 of A identity, H1 G1 A. So I can use that observation there that we get uh, E at G1 of a is roughly equal to um, ah, the first projection of what's written there, h of a. It's with an inverse, yeah. So, um, so here we get our homotopy from, yeah, because here is written projection, we get our homotopy to G2 which gives us our zeta, and um, likewise we should obtain our eta, um, pro 2. Ah, you can also take the second projection. Why the hell is that good? Ah, yeah. So when you take this, <laughs> Second, yeah, 
Yeah, oh, um, okay. So I have notes and I want to send them in the afternoon. Uh, boss made some revisions, so I will uh, make them. Uh, but then I will send them so you can review uh, the theorems that I explained. There are a little bit more properties because I didn't have enough time. For example, that a function is unconnected if and only if the co-diagonal of that function is n plus one connected. Um, uh, that's also written out in these notes and uh, yeah, it's part of our article with Boss, so it's going to be published hopefully soon. Not yet. Um, no, the other things that we showed was that that it's um, uh, preserved on the retract and that it's also images are preserved on their pullback and also that unconnectedness is preserved on their pullback. Um, but um, yeah, we didn't have more applications yet.